Hey there, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series that I've partnered up with Linode to create. Now, the purpose of this video series is to expose people to different Docker containers and getting familiar with the idea of hosting a Docker container to fill specific needs for their personal life or their small business or whatever the case is, but just kind of getting a, a, a certain level of comfort with hosting Docker containers. Now, I feel like if you're watching this video, there's at least a good chance that you help manage or you, you run a small business. What I wanna show you today is a Docker container that will help you gain insight about your product or service from your customers or even your potential customers with a Docker container called Fighter. Now, if you'd like to follow along with this video, I highly suggest going down to the video description where you'll find a link to head over to Linode and get $100 in free credit to check out their service for 60 days. So this is fighter.io, the homepage of the Docker container that we're gonna take a look at in this video. And right here, we can see that it is a feedback portal that helps you build better product where it gives your customers a voice and lets them tell you what they need. So you can spend less time guessing and more time building a better product. So you may have seen some version of this on any website where you're being asked to give feedback and you can see this whole list uh, of conversations that are happening where people can submit an idea, explain their idea, submit it, and then other people can not only upvote but also contribute to the conversation about that idea. And what's cool about Fighter is there are a couple of different options. The first one is that you can, if you'd like, go over and have them host it for you. But that's not really what we're here to talk about. So what I wanna show you again in this video is how to get this set up on Linode. Now, as I mentioned, this is part of a video series. So while you, I don't necessarily recommend that you go back and watch the entire series, that might be a bit much, but I do definitely recommend that you go back and watch at least the very first video because that kind of shows the setup process that we went through to, to get our Linode Docker system set up and, and configure domain names and reverse proxies and things like that. So definitely check out at least the first video in this video series uh, before you jump into this, just so we're kind of all on the same playing field here. So one of the things that I really love about Fighter is that they've actually got an entire section on their documentation about how to deploy this with Docker. And of course, here it says, our prerequisites are gonna be Docker and Docker Compose. We're gonna need a PostgreSQL 12 plus database, as well as an email sender, whether that's an SMTP server or something like they mentioned here, like a Mailgun account. Now, the thing to keep in mind with Linode is for security reasons, they have uh, temporarily blocked certain ports, including SMTP ports. Uh, so if you need to do that, if you need to use an SMTP server, uh, you will wanna submit a, uh, a ticket to Linode to have them open up the appropriate ports for your SMTP server so that you can use that and um, and, and be able to uh, send, uh, you know, like password recovery things and notifications and things like that. You will want, again, either an SMTP server or a Mailgun account to to configure this to get all of the features again with notifications and that sort of thing. So once you've met all of the prerequisites for Fighter, what we can do is actually scroll down on this page a little bit and take a look at the Docker Compose that we're going to use to deploy Fighter on our uh, Linode Docker setup. Uh, if we take a look at this, this is going to be a version two, basically versions, uh, different versions will have different capabilities attached to them. For this uh, purpose, a version two Docker Compose is perfectly fine. Below that, we're listing services, and we've got a couple of services listed here. The first one is a database. That's what DB right here is. Below that, we've got an app. Uh, those can really be named whatever you want to name them, but I always like to name uh, the, the services uh, kind of what they are so that it's easier to decipher what's going on in our Docker Compose here. Going up to the database service, uh, we've got a restart policy of always. Basically, that's just kind of a preventative measure if your server has to reboot. Uh, if this is set to always, the container will make every effort it can to come back up automatically without any intervention from you. Below that, we've got a Docker image. We're going to use Postgres version 12. That's what's going on on this line. Below that, we've got some a volume. Uh, basically, where are we going to store the database uh, on our Docker server? Now, they recommend var slash finder slash pg underscore data. That's fine, but that's not how we're going to do it. I'm going to modify this a little bit when we actually get into the deployment process. But just know that this volume is where we're going to store our database. 
Below that, we've got some environment variables of a Postgres user and a Postgres password. Basically, this is going to be the username and password that your application will use to access the database once everything is deployed. And that's all we need for the database service. Below that, we're gonna have an application service. Um, again, we've got a restart policy of always, just so that it will automatically come back up. So below the restart policy, we've got an image. And basically this is just saying, hey, go to the get fighter repository and get the uh, fighter application or Docker container in this case, but make sure that you get the stable version of that. You'll often see latest or specific versions like we saw above with version 12 on that database. We're just asking for this stable version of this Docker container. Below that, we've got an application port. Basically, which port are we going to use to access our, our application? Now, this one's a little weird um, because they've, they've mapped it uh, to be port 80 on the host side and port 3000 on the container side, which is it's fairly normal, I suppose. Um, we're not going to use this exactly like it is. We're gonna modify that once we get it over to, uh, over to the way we're going to deploy this. But um, this is how we're going to access our, our application is on port 80 based on the way this is set up. But again, we're gonna change that just a little bit in a little while. Below our ports, again, we've got some environment variables. Basically, our first one is our public host name. Um, and in this case, they've got a base URL equals HTTPS feedback.yoursite.com. We're gonna do something very similar to that. But this is the URL that you'll use to access your, your fighter instance. Below that, we've got a database URL. Basically, this is telling the application how to connect to our database. So we've got a database URL and we're saying, hey, we're gonna to connect to a Postgres database. After that, we've got a username of fighter that we can see here. Uh, that maps up to the Postgres user up here. And next, we've got our password for being able to connect to that database. And so if you change the password here, which I highly recommend, um, also change it down here so that they match. Now, after that, it says at db colon 5432. Basically what that's saying is, it's saying that that at DB is saying, hey, this is the, 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 the host name that we're looking for in order to connect. Now that DB that we see right here was actually declared right up here. That's the host name for the service. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind there. And then this colon 5432, that's saying connect to the host name of DB on port 5432. It's all that's going on there. And we've got slash fighter, and we're saying SSL mode equals disabled. Below that, we've got a JWT secret. And basically that's just going to be a long string of characters that will help us with our API authentication. It's just kind of an encryption key uh, that allows our, our applications to talk to each other. Uh, and this just helps with that encryption process. After that, of course, we've got a, an email, no reply, basically, uh, when notifications are sent uh, to, to, your, to your customers, your participants, whatever you want to call them, um, this is the email from which the emails will be sent. Now, below that, we get into some stuff about like Mailgun and SMTP. So I'm not going to go too much in depth on this uh, because everybody's going to do this a little bit different, but we'll kind of go through just a quick explanation, uh, just so we've got a basic understanding of what's going on. Uh, basically, uh, the first section here is for using Mailgun, uh, where you'd have your Mailgun IP, your Mailgun domain, and then your region. You just fill those in and then make sure to uh, remove the hashtag uh, or the pound sign, whatever you want to call it, um, the Octothorpe. Uh, remove that for either of these two different services that you want to use uh, with regards to mail. <clears throat> Actually, I guess there's three services. There's also an AWS uh, section down here. But uh, if you wanted to use Mailgun, you would remove uh, the, the, the hashtags at the beginning of those three lines and fill in the appropriate information there. If you wanted to use SMB, TP. Uh, again, you would remove all of the uh, the hashtags, pound signs, whatever, at the beginning of this and fill in the appropriate information uh, for authenticating to your SMTP server. Again, if you use SMTP, um, make sure that you, you submit a ticket to Linode to uh, have the port that you need opened up on your Linode uh, so that you can actually communicate with your SMTP server. Below that, we've got an AWS section down here. Uh, we're going to skip over that. I've, I've never dealt with that at all, and I don't want to give wrong information, so we're just going to pretend it doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at Fighter, as well as the Docker Compose that we're going to use in order to deploy Fighter, let's actually take a look at what it's going to take to deploy Fighter. Now, what we'll want to do first is head over to our Linode account and get logged in to our dashboard. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually we're going to use this Linode tutorial. That's the one I've been using for a good chunk of the, um, the tutorials that I've done with Linode over the past year or so. Uh, but what we want to do first is actually uh, set up our subdomain for our application so that we can fill that in appropriately when we are in the process of deploying our uh, container setup. So what I wanna do is I wanna make note of this IP address right here for my container or for my, for my Linode. Uh, and it's 45, 79, 14, 131. Yours of course will be different. Uh, but what I wanna do is actually go over to domains 
And I want to go over here to tutorialserver.xyz. That's the domain that I've been using for this. And I just want to make sure that that is correct. Where I've got this IP address right down here. It is. So what I want to do is actually add an A record to my, my domain configuration here for whatever we're going to use uh, for uh, the URL for our application setup. Now, over here in their docs, they actually use the base URL of feedback.yoursite.com. I think that's brilliant. We're just gonna use feedback.tutorialserver.xyz. And of course, you'll change that to whatever you want yours to be, but that's what we're gonna use for the sake of this tutorial here. So I'm just gonna copy feedback because I'm lazy. And then I'm gonna do an add a record there. I'm gonna put in the host name, which will just be feedback. And then we'll put in the IP address of our Linode. In this case, again, 45.70. 9.14.131. Again, yours will be different, so be sure to put in the appropriate information for your setup there. And once we've got that, <clears throat> we can come over and click on the save button. And now we've got um, our feedback uh, A record set up for our configuration, which means now we can actually start deploying our Docker container setup for Fighter. So what I wanna do is actually come back to my Linodes. Again, I wanna grab this IP address right here open it up in a new tab and go to port 9000. Again, we covered this in the first video where we installed uh, all of the dependencies for the rest of these videos in this series. We're gonna deploy this with Portainer. So once we're here, once we're logged in, we'll go ahead and click on our local area right here in the middle of the page. And then we're gonna come over to Stacks. So you can think of stacks in Portainer as synonymous with a Docker Compose that we looked at over in the Fighter docs. So what we wanna do is click on Add a Stack. We're just gonna call this Fighter like so. And then over here, I've got uh, a, a Docker Compose or a stack that I've kind of configured a little bit uh, in order to get it to work with our existing setup. So what I want to do is kind of come up to the top. Again, we've got our version two, or we've got our services for our database. We've got our, our restart policy, our image, our volume is what I want to change first here. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do, I'm going to change this to match the um, the structure that we've used in previous videos. So it's going to be uh, slash home slash docker slash fighter slash pg underscore data is, is exactly kind of what we've been using for uh, the rest of our, our videos in this series. So we're just going to keep this consistent. Uh, for the environment variables, again, we've got our username and our password. Uh, again, for demonstrative purposes, I'm not going to change any of this, uh, but just know that you should uh, for the sake of security. Um, and below that, we're going to notice something different, where we've got a network listed here of Nginx Proxy Manager underscore default. Now that is, again, part of that first video where we installed our reverse proxy, which was Nginx Proxy Manager. And this is the network that it generated when we deployed it. So this is the network we're going to use to attach this, uh, this container, these containers rather, to that same network so that our reverse proxy can easily communicate with any of the Docker containers that we've got deployed and want access to via a domain name. So below that, again, we've got our, our app, which of course would be Fighter. Restart policy of always image, ports. I'm gonna change this just to be something uh, random, just so that I don't have to try to remember what I've got deployed and what I don't, or what I've got available rather, or what I don't. So there's just a random 3846 that we're going to point, or that we're gonna use for our setup here. It's not really gonna matter, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Below that, we've got a base URL. Again, I wanna change that to be appropriate for what we were talking about here, which would be feedback dot tutorial server dot xyz like so um, again we've got a database url we've already kind of covered that if we're going to change any of the usernames and passwords up at the top we want to make sure that we adjust them down here as well again for the sake of this tutorial we're not going to just know that again if you change them in the database you'll need to change them in this database url environment variable for fighter our jwt secret here says basically generate a 512 bit secret here so what we can do is just grab that url open a new tab Make sure that we select 512, and then we can um, just regenerate that uh, until we're, we're happy with it. Uh, we're just gonna grab this one right here. We're gonna come back to our Portainer instance. We're gonna change this like so. And then we've got, <clears throat> again, I've, I've got SMTP set up here, uh, but we've got an S our, our no reply email, uh, our SMTP uh, host, port, email address, password and um, and basically our, our security method, whether it's uh, TLS or SSL, uh, you can, in this case, say, if it's TTLS, you'll say true here. Otherwise you would say false. Again, we've attached this to our Nginx proxy manager underscore default container for easier communication between the reverse proxy and these containers. And then because both of these containers have declared uh, a network, we need to actually say, hey, how are we going to connect to this network? So here we've got networks, Nginx proxy manager underscore default, external equals true means that that, that, uh, that network already exists and that the, the Docker instance doesn't need to create a new 
uh, network. So this is just saying, hey, there's already a network out there. We're going to connect to this one. And that's all we've got to do here. So once you're happy with how your Docker Compose or your stack in this case is configured and you're ready to go, all you've got to do is just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. We're going to give this a few minutes to deploy and set everything up in the background. And while this is going on, what we can do is kind of... Um, not waste any time. What we're gonna do is jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager and get our domain set up. So again, in order to get to Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, what we'll do is go to our IP address and then port 81. Again, we covered how to do that in the first video in this series. So if you're not familiar with Nginx Proxy Manager, again, definitely check out that first video. What we wanna do though, is actually generate an SSL uh, for our Docker setup here. So what we'll do is come up here to where it says SSL certificates, and then we'll click on add an SSL certificate. And we'll click on Let's Encrypt. And then what we'll want to do is put in our domain name here. So again, that was feedback.tutorialserver.xyz. Uh, for, for this tutorial anyway, yours will be different. So be sure to put in your uh, subdomain and domain as appropriate for your setup. And then press Enter. And then what we can do is come down to the bottom where it says, I agree. Make sure that you actually agree before you do. Uh, and then click Save. So after a couple of moments, you'll see that the page is reloaded and we have a feedback.tutorialserver.xyz SSL configured on our setup here. So our next step will actually be to get the domain configured in a reverse proxy here. So what we're gonna do is go to hosts. We're gonna go to proxy hosts. We're going to add a proxy host. Again, our domain name will be feedback.tutorialserver.xyz. And then below that, we've got a scheme. In this case, it's going to be HTTP. Now. While I understand that we are putting this on an SSL, the container itself does not have a built-in SSL. If it did, then we would switch this to HTTPS, but because it doesn't, we're gonna leave this as HTTP. Now for our forward hostname slash IEP, there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but what I like to do is come back over to Portainer and uh, find uh, our newest container here, which would of course be Fighter. And what I wanna do is grab the, the IP address right over here uh, that's listed next to the container. So we're gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And then our forward port, this will be the, the port on the inside of the container. Now, remember when we took a look at our Docker Compose here, let's actually go back to that. So if we take a look at our application here, we've got, again, we've got these, these ports down here for the container. Uh, the first one is for the host side. Uh, basically that's gonna be like the Linode or the, the server itself. And there's 3000 right here will actually be the container side of things. Because we've got this uh, container on an existing network, we can actually use the container port because we're also using the container's IP address on that network. So to come back over to Nginx Proxy Manager, our forward port in this case would be 3000. That's why I said earlier that that, that random uh, port that I created of 3846 didn't really matter. It was just to prevent it from confl conflicting with other containers on our Docker server. So coming back over here, I like to cache assets, block common exploits, and enable web WebSocket support. It's just kind of a, a thing I do. Uh, next, we're gonna go to SSL. And we want to uh, do the drop down here. We want to find our uh, our feedback.tutorialserver.xyz, and we're just going to make sure by checking all of these uh, tick boxes here that our SSL is enforced to the nth degree. So we'll go ahead and click on save, and then right here is feedback.tutorialserver.xyz. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and here we are. Just that quickly and easily, we've got Fighter set up. So the first thing we need to do is set up an account. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to say my name uh, is David put in my email address. And what is this feedback forum for? Um, and we're just gonna say um, uh, YouTube videos. And we're, then we're gonna say confirm. We just sent a confirmation link to DB Tech or David at dbtechreviews.com. Click the link to re complete the registration. So after a couple of minutes, you should see an email that looks like this in your inbox or one of your subfolders. You may have to look around a little bit depending on your email provider. But what I'm gonna do is click this link right there. And here we go. Uh, now our fighter is up and running and we can uh, start using it to get feedback from our customers, our clients, uh, whoever it is we're looking to get feedback from using our new fighter instance. Now here it says it's recommended to create at least three suggestions before sharing this site. The initial content is important to start engaging with your audience. I think that's important. So what you wanna do is enter a suggestion here. Um, like what can we do better? Uh, so, uh, let us know what we can do oops, better. And then we'll click, uh, let's do this like that. And we'll click submit. 
And then at that point, you can, uh, of course, add more of those if you'd like, or leave it up to your community to ask questions and give feedback on your product or service so that you can focus on the things that your, your, your clients, your customers, uh, whoever is looking to get a better response from on your service. So hopefully this all makes sense. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That really does help us out quite a bit here. That said, don't forget to jump down to the description where you'll find a link where you can go over to Linode and get $100 in free credit to check out their service for 60 days. I think though, with all of that said, I do want to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.